Hi, my name is Uza Banashinska, and my film is Grandma, Mama, Aunt, Sister, Cat. Um, it's a film about a matriarchal family um, made with uh, footage from the educational film uh, studio materials from Wuj, um, some communist materials um, that served a didactic purpose in the time. And I am transforming them um, yeah, into this story about a matriarchal family and the reproduction of ideological and representational systems. Mama mówi, no i jesteś z nami, a poza tym babcia, ciocia, siostra, kotka. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbobak, and this time we are talking about the short film Grandmama on Sister Cat. Hi, welcome. Hi. Welcome to the Teddy, welcome to the Berlinale. Um, the film uses archival materials from the educational film studio in Wood. Um, can you tell us a bit about this archive and how did you encounter it and what kind of materials they, they collect? And so the archive worked with the film school in Wood during communism and uh, they would basically like hire filmmakers or students uh, from the film school to do these educational films uh, that were later, I guess, distributed to schools and um, mm -hmm. to different institutions. Um, and I encountered it during a research group um, that was working with the uh, essay film studio in Łódź also. But it was like a remote group um, for many international also filmmakers that mm -hmm. were interested in working with this archive. And um, they were able to give us 300 films. Um, like previews of films uh, from yes. from there, and that's how it started. But yeah, 300 is nothing compared to what they have. They have like 5,000. Oh wow! Yeah, that's that's like a massive collection then. Um, and what was it about this archive that then, or or how did um, at the end the narrative formed around the archival materials? So at first I was actually supposed to make a film about cars. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was my initial idea, which I very quickly scrapped. Yeah. Um, and I just started to watch these, uh, these films, this footage, and just like start to live with them in a sense. Uh -huh. And I got really drawn into the atmosphere and this kind of like darkness, overarching darkness mm. that was there and this this oppressive voice of uh, often the male like disembodied narrator yeah. and uh, i started seeing my family i started seeing like the past kind of of, uh, of how my family used to present themselves also mm. in in our family archive uh, and because i um, my family is very matriarchal um, then I thought it would be a nice kind of starting point to create this like different narrative within it. So I just started seeing them as characters and then building that world slowly through mm. the eyes of the child. That's really interesting because then what you're basically saying is that it's the material itself that was dictating and, and bringing out personal memories even, which then formed um, the narrative of the film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it was really like I was listening to the material somehow, yeah. and it was talking. <laughs> yeah, this is super interesting. Um, how did you approach approach the project then visually? I mean, obviously, as you said as well, the the materials are there, and they they have their own particular way of presentation. But then you also kind of use different kinds of distortions in the film, and you really 
play with the material? Can you talk a bit about the visual language of the film? I think that was like one of the most important uh, elements for me. And it started with the visual. It started with just like sound and image, not language yet. Yeah. Um, so I just started to play around and think like, how can I change the context, the original context of, of the films? And that was the easiest or like the most effective to do mm. with the sound. Um, so I was really interested in like not um, not so much as what these images show, but what can they do in a sense, mm. or like how can they be activated um, so that they become the characters also in a sense. Um, so for that also, I think yeah, I focused really on the editing on um, on how to create the story through also like shapes and mm. colors in a sense. Um, similarly, as also in one of the films, The Child, um, in one of the original films, there's a child that is like making a world out of different shapes. Yes. Um, and that was kind of the starting point as well. And then at some point, I think, came the visual effect as well of the distortion of the image, um, which came from, I guess it came with this, like one of the most sexist um, mm, yeah, fragments. Yeah. So I just saw it and I was like, I, ca I cannot just use it as it is because I'm using the sound and the image original, yeah. um, which I don't do much in, in other parts of the film. Then I decided, okay, like something has to be done with it. So it's kind of, the visual effect became like the censorship that the family puts on, uh, on these images. Yeah. yeah, right. Let's talk a bit about the propagandistic nature of of these images and it's um, it's very interesting because um, you sort of then transform the the images and you use you use it as a site for auto fiction maybe um, but then even through that that also somehow preserves this propagandistic quality that is so inherent to the original images. Can you talk a bit about how you worked with, with this particular quality of, of the archive? I think that was very, uh, very much also reflected in my own, like my personal experience. And that's how it kind of also became this really reflection on the like institutional violence and how that violence is kind of transmitted and uh, seeing also in my family who was very like yeah fiercely matriarchal um, and opposing these like norms um, from the patriarchal reality that they also took a very strong and like radical mm. kind of stance um, and it seemed like they're just flipping the, the reality so in that sense mm. the propaganda also was retained. So like we had the original propaganda, but then it became the propaganda kind of of the family. So mm -hmm. so I was interested in that kind of switch. And mm -hmm. um, and also then that's how the figure of the child started as as the character that is trying to to complicate this. That is not so binary. That is not we're switching from one side to the other. Yeah, and that's also very intriguing or fascinating in it that this child figure in it kind of is the one who has the most agency in the, in the entire film. I mean, the narration is basically done by, by, this, by this child. Um, how did this come about and, and how did you approach the, the narration of the film, which is like so key and integral to, to the narrative? It started mainly also because like these films, there's a lot of children in them because they yeah. were aimed at children uh, often. And I think the, the, the fragments that I was seeing that had children in them were the most like shocking in a mm -hmm. sense or like the, the strongest, um, especially because you see these like gender uh, stereotypes being basically repeated and mimicked by yeah. these little kids. Um, and so that's how it kind of started also that, uh, that I thought maybe it's a good starting point to have this child as a narrator. Um, and it was quite interesting to me also how there was this contrast between the child as this, um, this person who is like making imaginary worlds and, and like uh, creating magic in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, 
but also embedded within this very strict and rigid um, reality mm. where the norms are kind of intensified also. So um, I kind of wanted to, to play around and see how the child can actually bend these norms yeah. um, and overtake the whole, um, the whole family because the child is presenting the family. So we see the yeah, perspective, yeah. their perspective. And I think over the, over the course of the film, it tries, yeah, it, maybe at first it mimics, then it kind of internalizes, and mm. then it tries to complicate um, what is being told to, well, to them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, reproduction is, is key here, and not just in this family level, and as you explained how certain norms and, and roles are being reproduced within, within the family, but then also how these kind of materials that are in the archive, these educational materials, how they then reproduce um, all of these things. And I really had to think about um, the aspect of time in the film and how the film kind of breaks with this idea of reproductive time. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, just from that point in that you are using archival materials, you are bringing it into the future or, or into the present and then there is like a lot of reflections about future and what like all of these norms mean and how we can like play around with them how we can like shift them so i was really wondering um was this like a conscious decision on your part did you want to think a bit about this aspect of reproductive time and did you um maybe with this project try to find a different kind of form or film language through which we can talk about maybe more of a, so to speak, queer time. Definitely, yeah, that was one of my like research uh, mm. paths in a sense, or like yeah, frameworks mm. that, that I used uh, when I was thinking about it. And indeed it started with reproduction, both in terms of like how reproduction is produced in the image, but also like mm -hmm. how the images reproduce certain norms. And also the child is the product of, of this whole right. process. Um, so then I thought about, uh, I was reading a lot about like queer, queer children or like mm. the idea of a queer child, not really just, yeah, just as a narrative, but more as an idea of this person that is dislocated in time because the child is not necessarily queer when it's mm. a child, but it becomes queer after. So there's yeah. this, in the movie at the end, there's also um, this, uh, this sentence that uh, my meaning is always delayed. Mm, That's yeah. what the child uh, says. And that kind of came from this, exactly this like temporal shift that, yeah. um, that happens. Um, and uh, yeah, and in that sense also the child is um, is dislocating the images in time. I yeah, guess that was totally. that was also my my intention in it, yeah. and um, and thinking about it, yeah, and also about the both the meaning of the child as in the identity, mm. but also the meaning of the images, and that was also my goal to kind of to come, and kind of um, like uh, develop this this path of how this reproduction of these systems and of these norms happens and where can I like turn this path so that it doesn't yeah. go in a, such a linear way. Yeah, how we can like deter them a bit. Yeah, it was really fascinating to see. I was like thinking about this throughout, so that's why I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> um, yeah, I was also then thinking about the archive itself as an institution and maybe what does this film um, put forward or 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 state about the archive because I do feel that um, that in a way it calls into question this archival authority mm. and how um, how archives as institutions are positioned in our society to I don't know be this source of the undoubted truth. Um, and what exists in the archive, what exists outside of the archive, and how does that set up certain uh, power relations in knowledge production. So I was thinking, um, yeah, what was 
what was your take on that? Did you think about this while making the film? Did you did you think about this? Yeah, the power of the of the archive and and was it a conscious choice from your part to, in a way, try to question that or undermine it? Of course, definitely. That was like a major major part uh, of my thinking about it, especially because this archive is, in a sense, so limited because it presents mm. really perspective of yeah of a very particular framework so this like very masculinist uh, disembodied kind of objective scientific knowledge um, so it was really important to me also to to find another way to relate to that archive so not really as these images that are yeah there are these like um, facts or truths yeah. or objective reality in a sense but more like how can I cultivate this relation of kinship towards these images and how can I use that in order to create new narratives that are not in the archive per se. So for example, if we talk about queer narratives, of course they're absolutely non-existent in a very like um, straightforward way, yeah. but they are there. They are, they are there hidden in a sense. Yeah. So it was my intention also to to pick up on these mm -hmm. um, and to find them because I mean that was what was the the most fascinating part about working with these images is that like the longer you look into them you're gonna find some mm. hidden hidden things basically yeah. um, and they can be very like very imperceptible in a sense like they're affects often yeah. and but they can be elevated in a sense from from these uh, very straightforward images and so in that sense I think that's also my fascination in general with archives not really what is in there but w what is not kind of. not not particularly in there because then it is also becomes in a way like a practice of of, of the queer eye to kind of pick up on these traces as you see to to see what's maybe subconsciously there in those images. Um, and do you think that in a way the film could also function yeah, as a, as a particular way of queer vision? I don't know, that's like a bit of a clumsy way to put it, but like, like a queer eye on, on, these, on these materials? I hope it could. <laughs> I mean, that was yeah. also, yeah, what I was trying to do, especially because um, I was making it um, like while I was also exploring my own identity. Mm. And uh, since I came out as non-binary, um, I thought it was really, really important somehow to find yeah. that non-binarity in that mm. ultra-binary reality yeah, yeah right uh, so in that sense i really tried to find that perspective and to me that's the child basically which to many people it's a girl to others it's not like to me it's that non-binary child yeah. basically and uh, and their perspective on it is really shaped also by this super binary super gender normative reality but still it's um yeah, it tries to find uh, like a queer queer vision in it, yeah. or like queer, yeah, viewing. Yeah. And it sort of has the tools to, yeah, to undermine those kind of rigid binaries that we tend to uh, think through. And in this sense, and this is also not just with this film, but like usually or in general about like uh, found footage filmmaking, but what I often ponder about is to what extent can we see this as a sort of act of resistance? Um, we talked about, yeah, about this like archival authority, but then also um, to sort of this resistance to the past remaining in the past. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know what is, what is your, your take on that? I think my take also throughout the film, I started to realize more and more how I cannot resist that past and mm. how it's very much embedded within me also. And uh, within also looking at my family, how, like, how much they resisted that pa patriarchal reality um, made them even more deeply ingrained within yeah. it, in a sense. Yeah. And I was finding the same 
for myself and also looking at those archives, um, that they will still have their context and I will never be able to erase that. But it's more through adding and through um, distorting, in a sense, also also in a literal way, but yeah, like more theoretically distorting them, that um, that this is in a sense the act of resistance. And in that way, there's also the the figure of Baba Yaga, right. um, who to me is also this hybrid that is created through this like yeah ancient matriarchal society, but also this patriarchal Christian. I and she has yeah she's basically this monstrous entity and in a sense the child is also that that is completely created by these two realities and carries them mm. and it's more like yeah how how do we move on from that um, I think by accepting it that it's also mm. that it's with us and yeah. yeah yeah well certainly the film provides some thought some food for thought in that regard so <laughs> Yeah, well, Zuza, thank you so much for being here with us, for taking the time. I wish you all the best for the Berlinale. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.